I've got some rare quiet time in the house lately, so let's actually do what I haven't been able to do in quite a while and talk some DX Common Rider gear. Specifically, everything designed for upgrading your build driver, because it looks like the last of those is due out sometime soon. So I'm going to spend the next five days talking about the ones that you can get right now. That means I'm going to sound a little bit weird this week. Uh, the microphone has to be pointed at that thing for the duration of these reviews. I'm also going to skip the opening gags because some of these are going to be long, some are going to be short, and I want to get right to it. So we are going to start where the toy line started and talk about the Claws Dragon, or Cross-Z, or Claws, or however you want to say it. I'm pronouncing it the way they pronounce it in the show, Claws Dragon. So, done in a very deep shade of metallic gray plastic throughout, and then just a little bit of red plastic for little bits here and there. Everything else is done up in metallic paint, the cobalt blue doing up a ton of the mechanical details, the more dragon-oriented stuff done in a very nice shade of copper, and then just a little hit of green and red here for a few little accents. It looks quite neat. I do like the idea of just a little pet dragon for one of the common riders to pal around with, even though it wasn't used like that for very long. The aesthetic itself is very much build style, where you can see a lot of the existing mechanical bits. There are wiring, there's little bolts, and a lot of tech greeble strewn throughout. In particular, tons of cables going through the actual design. It gives it more of a makeshift look, kind of a experimental prototype thing, which is something akin to Kamen Rider Double, and yeah, the show's got a lot of comparisons to Double. One thing I did notice is there's a lot of these little cross beams molded throughout the dragon's neck and all the way through the tail, which kind of gives it the look of a suspension bridge, which I thought was kind of interesting. You have the same thing going on up here, like two big scaffolding towers. So yeah, there's a little bit of actual building in the aesthetic of build. Uh, I do like the overall design. If we take a look at the dragon head itself. It's a mean little looking dragon. A little bit of blue there, a little bit of mechanical detail, but yeah, for the most part, about what I would expect. He's also the only part that's painted on both sides, because everything on the back side is just gray. You'll also notice that uh, uh, the dragon element kind of goes away on the back side. We got the feet molded in here, but uh, his legs are shaped like tree trunks, and then uh, of course he's only got one wing. Uh, someone play the Sephiroth music, but yeah, he's a pretty simple little guy. So, just definitely designed to only be seen from one direction. Now, on the underside, he does have an on-off switch. He's the only toy this week that does, and I think a lot more needed it. But we'll talk about that in due time. For now, we will turn him on. So, text sound effects aside, the big red thing is the button that activates sound effects. Right now, we have but two available to us as such. And that that noise is a little bit Kyoruger for me, but otherwise, yeah, they are nice little noises and show accurate as you would completely expect. Now, before we get into its device mode, I'm going to introduce you to its full model counterpart, Dragon. Of course, this one has so much significance in the show. Uh, the sculpting of it itself, yep. You do see the dragon emblem in there. This is before they started painting the emblem, so it's a little bit hard to make out. I do like the scaling effect they use, though, with the hexagon shapes. That's neat. So, yeah, uh, dark metallic blue plastic for the cap, which uh, still, as always, does absolutely nothing when twisted. And, yeah, a very light blue plastic for the bottle itself. And inside, a metallic blue cylinder to imitate fluid. Still does just the clicky noise. I will go ahead and try this out. About what you'd expect. Now it matches with Lock, which I don't have because Lock was a special release thing and stupidly expensive to buy on its own. So we are going to go just with what we got, which is the device itself. Flipping up the neck and tail, that's all you need for the device mode, and then we can insert the bottle. Another theme of this week it really doesn't care what bottle you put in there. All it does is depress the right button to tell it 
something is inside it. It could be any bottle. It doesn't read the little nubs. It doesn't have a track or anything. It can't ID anything. It does, however, change noises when a bottle's inside. It's gone a little bit key that on me. But with that said, we are ready to actually try out the Henshin sound effect. This is a little bit of a tight fit on the driver, so I would recommend when playing with it to have a nice grip on it as you drive it in. Now, like a lot of the build toys, it's a little bit out of sync if you don't get it exactly right. Uh, it's a little bit weird that way, but for the most part, you know, it usually works well enough. I do like the sound effects in this one, and there is something uh, there is something to say for how much it dominates the standby noises, because that definitely gives you a different feel from just your standard uh, DX build henshin. So, that part is good. So, let's try the finishing attack. And simple as that. So, good sound effects, nice solid design all around. It does add some bulk to the driver, of course, especially going forward, but for the most part, it does a good job of transforming the driver into something entirely its own. Now, we are gonna do one thing that the show just definitely does not do. Let's see how it sounds without, because there is a little bit of uniqueness to it. Is it bad that I kind of like the music without the bottle better? <laughs> it might be. Uh, do we have another one? So yeah, you do get a little bit more sound variety than you would expect if you play with it the way it wasn't intended to be played with, but hey, it's a toy, so you play with it however you want, right? And with that, that is the DX Claws Dragon however you want to pronounce it. It's a fun little toy, and while it does have some drawbacks, you're pretty much going to be used to it if you know your common Rider little transformy gimmicky toys. You know, not much of a transformation in a kind of a weird dragon mode, but, you know, sometimes you just gotta be into that. I do like the sound effects. I do think it adds an interesting aesthetic to the build driver and does a good job of transforming it into its own henshin device. So, yeah, I could recommend this one, though... For whatever reason, this is the one that got short produced. Most of the others are still easily obtainable. Uh, this one tends to get marked up. At time of review, he's a little bit harder to find than the others. So beware of the price you are spending and know how much it does before you commit to that because it's not a whole lot of sound effect. Good stuff, but maybe a little bit more than what it's getting marked up for. I will leave that part for you to decide.